Welcome to the Lumatic Show. Indeed, guys, and <laughs> Leo did some domino action for you with some of the stuff from the Bumblebee DVD, guys. Now, before we get too far into this, guys, there will be spoilers in this review. So if you guys do not want this spoiled for you, click off and come back after you've seen the movie, guys. If you give you five seconds, five, four, three, Two, Pause. one, and guys, okay, now we're going to get into the review proper. So let's take a look at what came with this. Okay, guys, so we have this slipcase here, guys. There's a nice embossing on it. This is just beautiful packaging. Beautiful, beautiful. There is nothing special, guys, about this. They did not do, they usually do figures and junk like that. This one did not have anything special, although it does have... This animated motion comic, except for, so we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, the bonus content is pretty cool. There's a, there's a lot of fun, actually, guys, in the bonus features for this. I would almost say it's worth it for that. Uh, you had Shatter and Dropkick. Dropkick, guys, the fight with Dropkick was one of the best, I think, in all of the Transformers movies. That was really good. And, of course, you had John Cena. <laughs> and John Cena played a uh, a Sector 7 guy and of course he's with of course Agent Simmons the young Agent Simmons guys so and he, he played a pretty prominent role in three of well actually two of the movies I guess the third well no actually four of the movies a prominent role maybe in, in the first three and then he was also in the last night just for that this is a very re nice retouch photo, guys. I like this. But we already have it here. So, and of course inside is digital code. There's the Blu-ray stuff. There's the regular one. And we've already watched this. So, here is the Sector 7 comic book. And it is a full comic book. It works really well here, guys. And then, for some reason, so you have this. You have this nifty little comic book here. And then, for whatever reason, when you click on this, instead of continuing where the comic books leaves off, where like it says, right? They continue an exclusive motion comic. So you're like, eh, okay, a motion comic, right? So you're thinking, okay, so it's going to be like cartoon, right? Except it does this whole book over again, guys, on the extra. So you literally are sitting through all this stuff. Which, of course, includes Agent Simmons. And this is kind of Agent Simmons' backstory. And then it picks up after you go through this whole thing all over again. And you can't skip. So, I don't understand why they made that decision. You don't need to have the book. The book is very cool, but you don't need to have this book. And then also have a bunch of static pictures in a so-called motion adventure. I mean, I'm glad they did it. Don't get me wrong, guys. I'm glad they did it. It was a cool part of it. I was just a little frustrated by that Wait, particular that choice. It connects. Yeah. Yeah, the covers connect. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah they do. They do. That's a pretty common device, guys. But, that, I mean, that part's cool. I'm glad they threw it in. I was happy to see it. I just wish they would. Like, you don't need to have both parts. I don't understand why they did that. And it's because I think they were trying to pad this. They knew, you know, the movie didn't do spectacular, right? And they knew that... People are not necessarily going to be motivated to buy it because the toy comes with it. Whoa. I know. The Autobot phase of glory. Guys, so they knew people wouldn't necessarily be motivated by that. So they had to tack on as much stuff as they could think of. There are some cool interviews, though, guys. I do dig that. I hardly surprisingly, know. Surprisingly, surprisingly, guys, there wasn't music videos from Haley Steinfeld. I would have expected that because... She did the, the end credit song, and I think I thought she released a video for it, but maybe not. I might be mistaken on there, but that would have been kind of a cool touch. So that kind of wraps it up for the extras. Definitely looking through that stuff, the interviews and things like that. 
was very cool. I enjoyed that part a lot. Did you like the extras? Mm -hmm. So what about the movie? Let's talk about the movie. Yeah, the movie, 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 movie. Movie, 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 movie. So guys, a lot of people, in addition to <laughs> Leo's very insightful commentary there, guys, a lot of the people, guys, with this, with this movie, said that this was the best version of Transformers in a live action movie. I agree. And I would not disagree with that, but I think it's a comparison. It, it, it only applies because of what it's being compared to. There are not a lot of other live action movies except for the Bay movies. And the Bay movies, all the first five of them, had huge problems because of the editing was not very judicious, guys. So they were always bloated, very lengthy things. This one has the same problem. It is too long of a movie, guys. Way too long of a movie. But it had enough little touch points. Like starting out on Cybertron, having the Cybertron battle, it had enough little touch points that a lot of people looked at it. They picked up in the fall of Cybertron. There's a lot of little fan insider stuff, guys. There's a lot of Easter eggs in this, guys, for fans of the franchise. But they also then decided to throw out all of the, at least not all of it, I guess, but they threw out a lot of the tra the Transformers history. Like, he doesn't come for World War II. He doesn't come way before that. There is no such thing. It's like the last night almost never happened, guys, in this movie, which is a little frustrating. Here's my theory. All right. Because they say B-127. Right? So I'm thinking there's two Bs, one fighting the World War One, the other one coming down after the World War One. That would be really cool. Guys, leave us a comment and let us know if you think Leo's theory is on the money. That uh, is very possible, guys. They've called it a prequel. They've called it an extension. They've called it a reboot. They Paramount doesn't know what this thing is, guys. And that's very clear. That's part of my problem with this, though. When they were writing this movie, they were not careful about what came before it, guys. And, and I think it, this, could, this could have been the very last one in the franchise. It was released basically just because filming had, it was already in progress and was mostly done. So there, you can see there's a lot of a hodgepodge nature to, to much of this. They made a good movie, yes, but it's, it's almost two hours, guys. And they could have done this a lot differently. For instance, one of the big arcs for Haley Steinfeld, who's the character, right, is about her jumping into the water to go rescue Bumblebee when he's in the water and doesn't need to be rescued, guys. So that's like the end scene. That's her big, that's her big sort of moment of, of triumph where her character comes around in this full circle thing and she's not afraid of water anymore where she was a diving champion and then her dad died and now she won't dive anymore, all that kind of stuff. She won't foolishly dive into rocks in the ocean in one of the scenes, right? And it's a dead scene. It makes no sense to even have it. So guys, what I would, like if I was writing this, what I would have done is, it's fine if you want to kill her dad, right? You know, Disney uses that effect a lot. It kills parents. And that's, that's, that's a fine device to use. But what I would have done is I would have had him die rescuing her, like in the ocean or something from drowning, right? And then, but he drowns trying to rescue her. And that's why she's afraid of water. So when she actually dives in for Bumblebee at the end, it's a huge deal. And then you can cut out all that other junk with all the other teenagers and the corn dog and all that, and all those other stupid elements, right? Like when he's there, when she's there, and that guy, right, and the girl, the blonde chick, none of that belongs in this movie. There's way too much of her family in this movie also. They could have really, really trimmed that down a lot. You could have knocked out 20, 25 minutes, made this thing an hour and a half, guys, and this thing would have been a banger. It would have been a zinger, guys. It would have been, it was a good movie as it was, but in the mo in the theater, I was constantly wishing they would just get on with it. Watching on DVD for the second time, I thought it flowed a little bit better, but there were still a lot of moments where I was like, just get on with it. You know, just nobody's coming to see all the family emotional blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Nobody's coming to see that. <laughs> they want to see Bumblebee doing cool stuff, and they want to see robots they, fighting. They want to see action. They, they want to see. They want to see. 
They want to see transformations. They want to see epic fights. They want they want to see explosions. Yeah, it's an action. It's an action adventure film, guys. And you have two great characters, really, in Dropkick and Shatter. And you could have those are like the two main best characters, but better than Bumblebee. Bumblebee also killed Dropkick. Yeah, he did. And having Bumblebee and Optimus together at the end, that was another nice touch. That was a cool thing. Her reacting that he could have, she could have been a Camaro the whole time. That was cool. I mean, there's a lot of really neat touches in this. They don't want to see her so-called feelings. They only <laughs> want to see her. They only want to see the... <laughs> and... <laughs> and... 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 And all those all epic parts. Yeah, you could have just had him transform back and forth a thousand times. Because, because those those are blockbusters. Those are block, 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 blockbusters. They, 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 yes, they are. And I think another nice touch was under that car there was a real beehive. Yeah, that was weird. Uh, but I mean, that was kind of cool too, I guess. What's interesting is you could have cut out this character. Right? The guy with the with the, with the frizzy hair you could have cut him completely out of this movie and it would have made next to no difference it made him it would have made a million dollar blockbuster i mean he's okay in there for texture guys i'm not saying they should have done that i'm just saying that he was kind of a disposable character and her family there's cool stuff like if you go look in the deleted scenes there's really cool stuff for when they expanded some of the scenes and you could see why they cut a lot of that stuff out. They just didn't... My, my complaint was that they just didn't cut enough off. So I thought, as a Transformers movie, it was it was very, very good comparatively. As a movie, 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 it's just okay. You know, are they... And, and there's parts of all of them that have some strengths. Like, the last night, obviously, watching Anthony Hopkins chew up scenery is cool. You had Stanley Tucci and Age of Extinction. I think Age of Extinction, honestly, guys, is probably still my favorite of, of all the movies. And I don't know why that is. It's just kind of the one that I think we I, we just latched onto. It was it was right time, right place. But Bumblebee, as a movie, was also pretty good. There were parts of last night I thought were pretty good, too. But it was... I think it, they, a lot of people were kind of checked out on that one. So, I mean... No. I, I can't believe that they they literally did what Disney did. They killed a parent. Yeah, Disney doesn't have a lock on 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 uh, executing parents, but you know, an hour and fifty three minutes, guys. Th this this would have been just much much more lean and, and and flowed a lot better if they would just try to tick for more like that hour and a half, guys. I, I think. Cutting 20, maybe 25 minutes out of it would have, would have really given you a very lean, tight, and, and just very good flowing movie, I think. And, and that was, I guess that's my biggest complaint with this. Well, that and that wrecking the continuity. I mean, in Studio Series, we have a World War II Bumblebee toy, right? So if that shows up in this continuity, what's everybody going to go? It's just like, oh, it's a what-if toy? You know what I mean? It's like... The, they spent a whole lot of time with him and Hot Rod trashing the Nazis and, and even going back all the way, Transformers all the way back to cave times and just, and instead they make this one, Bumblebee first arrives in the, in the 80s. That's when they make him show up. That's when the first Transformers on Earth is in the 80s compared in this timeline right here. Which makes no sense. I mean, you talk about return to G1, right? And... As soon as, the, by the end of the movie, the G1 form of Bumblebee is history. So what happened to all that G1 continuity? It just, whew. hey, there's a window. Let's just check it. Let's check it. Let's throw it out. And I don't know whether that was the director's fault, or the screenwriter's fault. I mean, I thought there was certainly a lot of strong touches to this, but I really, I really wish they wouldn't have done that. It was kind of funny to see a Plymouth. And an AMC, though, guys, which is uh, really, th those are really cool. Seeing a Javelin and seeing a GTX was really, really neat, although they ruined the GTX by putting all the junk on it, all the lights and stuff. I wish they wouldn't have done that, but, but blown muscle cars. There's a lot to love about this film. 
I just wish they would have kept the parts that were a lot to love and then tossed a lot of the other stuff. Like I mean, it's never going to get remade, unfortunately, but... Because it's like making a stew. How's that? That's like Bumblebee, the main ingredient. No, wait, Haley Steinfeld, the main ingredient that Bumblebee threw a little for, for the start of a texture... Then, then the frizzy guy for the texture, and then adding all the vi villains in for spice, for the tangy spice. So what's John Cena? John Cena. Do, 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 do. Is he the carrots, guys? Is he the potatoes? Leave us a comment, let us know. He's the meat. What, John Cena's the meat? <laughs> yeah, he is, he is pretty beefy, uh. Beefy guy, beefy guy. Beefy guy, he's really gentle. Really gentle. Yeah, John Cena is a uh, good wrestler. Quite a character. <laughs> quite a. He's. I liked him better actually in all the outtakes than I liked him uh, in the movie itself. I thought he was okay in the movie, but it, it, oh, it was a cool. Ro oh, a robot! Where are you running off to? A pizza place? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so there it is, guys. There is our look. Our discussion, guys, this isn't even a look really because we're not showing you anything other than the packaging. Yeah. This is our look at the package and our discussion of Bumblebee! The movie! The movie! And it did well enough. It's his movie. It's his movie. His movie. It's his his movie. movie. His Transformer movie. So, guys, it did well enough that there probably will be more movies. Movies, movies. We don't know what though. I don't think they're going to develop the, the Bay continuity, but supposedly there's an Optimus standalone. I don't think we're going to get that. I think we'll get a Bumblebee and Optimus buddy movie. Buddy, 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 buddy. Elbow face. Something like like Lethal Weapon or Bad Boys or something like that. And they'll just run around fighting crime and Decepticons. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll have capes. Oh, they'll have dun, capes. Dun, dun, so dun, many capes. Dun, dun. Their cape, I'm doing this is Batman. Their capes. <laughs> their capes will have capes. And guys, the head of the organization will be John Cena. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah, so it'll be sponsored by the WWE next time. And there it is, guys. There's our look at all of this craziness, guys. I would say definitely buy this package for this cool comic book. Uh, especially if you're into the whole lore. <laughs> of Transformers guys very cool guys if you did enjoy our look at this please give us the old thumbs up boink 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 boink, boink. boink, boink. guys hit boink. the red subscribe button if you have not boink. done so already guys hit the blue bell next to the red subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of the latest and greatest content as it's available guys we've collected so what will be the movie we've collected I think literally, except for the studio series, literally every toy that was available for this, I'm trying to think. There were like Mega there was a Megatron, he doesn't show up in here. There were some in the line that didn't show up in the movie. I don't, we might not have those, but we have a very extensive Bumblebee playlist, guys. If you'd like to check out the actual movie toys as well, guys. You can also follow us on our Twitter feed for updates to the channel as well as Twitter specific content, guys. Leave us a comment, let us know your thoughts on Bumblebee. Let us know your thoughts on some of the changes that I would have made. Would you have made the same changes? Would you have made other changes, guys? Let us know what your favorite Transformer movie is. This had a pretty garbagey toy line, guys. Honestly, overall, I was not impressed too much with the Bumblebee toys. Uh, guys, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that as well. Anyway, though, guys, that's going to do it for us this time. We will see you all next time. Bye-bye.